One of the most powerful and popular routing protocols out there today is OSPF, Open Shortest Path First. And OSPF is going to use an algorithm called Dijkstra's algorithm to make its routing, to make its forwarding decisions. And to illustrate how Dijkstra's algorithm works, I thought we would start off by planning a road trip. Let's pretend that we want to go visit Cisco's headquarters out in San Jose, California. Let's tell our car's navigation system to guide us there. Navigation. Navigation. Enter address. Please say the house number in single digits, followed by the street, the city, and the state. 150 West Tasman Drive, San Jose, California. Processing your input. Did you mean 150 West Tasman Drive, San Jose, California? Yes. Start guidance or add as another destination. Start guidance. Route guidance started. Please proceed to the highlighted route. 2,481 miles is a bit longer than I would personally like to drive. I think if I go to San Jose, it's going to be by air. But one of the reasons I wanted to show you this was to illustrate a real-world application for Dijkstra's algorithm that OSPF is going to be using. Dijkstra's algorithm in the car's navigation system determined the most efficient way to get from my current location to San Jose, California. I'm guessing that many of the routes were over interstates as opposed to back roads. Interstates would have a lower cost from the perspective of Dijkstra's algorithm. Let's get a bit mathematical with this discussion now and let's go out to a whiteboard and discuss how Dijkstra's algorithm really makes its calculations. Let's consider the operation of the Dijkstra algorithm that's used by OSPF. Before we get into some of the math involved, let's identify a few terms. Here we're not talking about routers or networks specifically. Just in general, I want you to understand the operation of Dijkstra's algorithm. Notice that we have these different nodes. We have A and B and C and D and E. We might call these nodes or vertices. Each one is a vertex. That terminology is sometimes used when you read the Dijkstra algorithm literature. I also want you to notice that this topology, this graph that we've shown you on screen, is a directed and weighted graph. Notice that we have weights, and I've just made these weights up like 20, 10, 30 for easy math. We've got a weight to say it costs us 20 to go from A to B. It costs us 10 to go from A to C. So these are weights, or you could think of them as costs, but this is a weighted graph, and it's also directional. And to make this consistent with the way routers normally operate, I've made the weight the same in each direction. But notice, we've got a weight from A to B. There's another weight from B to A. And I just made them the same, but realize with pure Dijkstra calculations, these weights could indeed be different. But normally in a networked environment, it's going to be the same cost to get between different areas of the network. Just keep in mind, it could be different. And what we want to do is to figure out from the perspective of node or vertex A, what is the most efficient path? What is the shortest path to get to B and C and D and E? And once we know the shortest path, we can construct a shortest path tree. So let's begin. Let's say on our table we want to go from node A. And we want to see what other nodes, what other vertices does A directly connect with? A connects directly to B and to C. Now we should start out by mentioning that the assumed cost when we begin is infinity. Until we know otherwise, it's an infinite cost. It's an infinite distance to go from A to B and from A to C and so on. But here, because we're directly connected to B, we know. It costs us 20 to go from A to B. So from node A to node B, the cost, the weight along that edge, that's another term for you to know. The edge is what connects the nodes together. 
That edge has a cost of 20. I'm going to say it's going to be a cost of 20 to go to B, and that's going to be going from node A. A also connects to C. Notice that the weight is only 10. We have a weight or a cost of 10. So I'm going to put in, it costs us 10 to go to node C, and that's coming from node A. A does not have a direct connection to node D, so we're going to say that the cost at this point is infinity. Similarly for E, we don't have a direct link, so the cost is infinity. What are we going to do now? Well, we already know to go from A to A, it's just us. We don't have to go anywhere. So we're all good on node A. There's nothing to find out about node A. That's where we're looking from. That's our point of view in this exercise. Next, we're going to ask, which of the remaining nodes have the lowest cost? If we look at the different numbers, we're going to see that it is node C. And we can conclude that that would be the lowest cost that's going to be possible. Since C already has the lowest cost of any of our other directly connected nodes, there's no way it's going to be more economical to go via another node. There's no way because C already has the lowest cost. It would cost us more to go to another node and then go to C than it would just go directly to C. So C, we're done. We know how to get to A, it's us. We know how to get to C, it's via us, it's via node A. So we're going to take the perspective now of node C. We're going to say, all right, it doesn't cost us that much to go to node C. Where can C get us? What is C directly connected with? Well, C is directly connected with D. And it costs us 20 to go from C to D. It already cost us 10 to go from A to C. So here's the way we write this. We say it's 10 plus 20 to get to node D via C, so we're going to put in a value of 30, and we're going to say that that is via node C. C can also get us to node E. It's a cost of 50 plus the cost of 10 that it already took to get to node C, so 10 plus 50 is 60. We have a cost of 60 to get to node E, and that's via node C. C also connects directly back to A, but there's no point in doing that math. We're already on A. We don't have to go anywhere to get to A, so no need to think about going back to A. Notice that C does not have a connection to B, though. What do we do there? Well, we still take the best path that we know so far, and we just bring it down. Let's just copy down that the best path known at this point to go to node B from node A is a cost of 20 going directly from node A. Let's copy down what we know about node C, and we know that is the final value. That is the, that is the best possible path to get to node C, and that's from node A. Now we find the lowest cost of any node that we've not yet considered. We're all done with node A. I mean, that's us after all. We're all done with node C. We just found the best possible path to go to node C. Now we're going to take a look and say, who has the lowest cost of the remaining nodes of B and D and E? Is it 20? Is it 30? Is it 60? Well, obviously it's 20. 20 is going to be the lowest cost at this point, and it's going to node B. That's going to allow us to conclude that we have found the best possible path to node B. Let's take a look at things from the perspective of node B. Node B connects back to A, but we don't consider that because we're looking from A. The only other node that B connects with is D. It's a cost of 30 to get there. There was a cost of 20 to go from A to B, and we have to add on the cost of 30 to go from B to D. That's going to be a total cost of 50. But before we write it down, we have to make sure it's better than what we already know. Already we see that we could get to node D via node C for a cost of 30. Oh, it's actually going to be less costly to go via node C. So we're not going to change anything. We're just going to copy down. This is still the best path via node C. And node B does not connect us anywhere else. So we simply copy down the previous values. Cost of 20 via node A to get to node B. A cost of 10 via A to get to node C. And we've got a cost of 60 via node C to get to node E. Let's see who has the lowest cost of the remaining nodes. The remaining nodes are D and E. 
Well, it's going to be node D that has a cost of 30 right now. Let's take a look at things from the perspective of node D. Who is D connecting with? Well, it's connecting to B, C, and E. What would be the cost to go to node B? Well, it's a cost of 30 just to get to node D, and then it would be another 30 to get back to B. 30 plus 30, that's 60. Is that better than the path we already know about? Is 60 better than 20? No, it's not. So we don't change anything to get to node B, and we knew that, didn't we? We knew that we already had the best possible path. We're going to keep the value of 20 via node A is the best possible path to get from A to B. We already know the best possible path by the same logic to get to C. It's what we've already found out. It's going to be a value of 10 via node A. We're on D right now. We're just going to copy that value down. The only thing that's somewhat in question is node E. D can get us there. D can get us there, but it has a cost of 40. So here's the question. If I add the cost of 30 that it takes us to get to node D, and then add on the cost of 40 that it takes to get from D to E, let's see, 30 plus 40, that's 70. Is 70 less than 60? No, it's not. That's not the best path. So we're just going to copy down 60C. Just for completion's sake, finish it up with node E. Where does node E get us? Well, node E gets us to C and D, but we've already found the best possible path to get to C and D. We're not going to find a better path via E. Just to prove it, let's take a look at how to get from E to C. It's going to be a cost of 60 just to get us to E, and then it would be another 50 to get us to C. That's, that's 110. That's, that's not good. That's much worse than a value of 10. What we find out, if you do that for node D, we already know the best path to get to all of the other nodes from node A. Let's just copy down our steady state values, the best possible path. This is our best possible route from node A to each of our other nodes. Let's take this information and draw the shortest path tree from the perspective of node A. From node A, we see that we could get to node B via A. So directly off of A, we could get to B. Let's draw B. To get to node C, that's also directly connected to A. So we'll draw that as part of our shortest path tree. How do we get to D? That's via C. To get to A to D, therefore, we would have to go from A to C. Then we would go down to D. Similarly, for node E, we have to go via C. Let's put our E here. That is our shortest path tree that we've now constructed. Again, we just did this from the perspective of one node. That's where we are, and we're asking how do we get, or what is the shortest path to use to get to these other nodes, and now we found it, thanks to the Dijkstra algorithm. You can get certified and a big check, just like Kevin show you how to fall in love with the tech.